Shalom, Shalom, Yasha Allah. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by showing my shaykh Yahweh Shai. This is Brother Shamawan here, back with another video. And today we're going to do a simple topic, a topic that I really should have been there, but show that salvation is only for the children of Israel, the descendants of any of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Right? We're going to go to who Christ came for. We're going to go to who gets salvation. We're going to go into all that tonight, man. But it's going to be really quick, though. So, all right. First scripture I want to deal with is who Christ came for. So, let's get Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. Right, this is red letter. Jesus Christ said it, right? It says, But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Jesus Christ only came for the Israelites. That's it. Out of his own mouth, we can close the book and not have that discussion no more. Jesus Christ said it out of his own mouth, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Let's get another example of who, or not example, but another piece of evidence of who Jesus Christ came for. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Right? It says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered them, answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Right? Verse 30 says, The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins, man. Salvation. What's the root word? Save. For Israel. Nobody else. Right? Let's get another precept to prove who Jesus Christ came for. Acts 13 and verse um, I want to say 26, I believe. Or we get 23 <laughs> uh, of this. Now, let's start at verse 22, get context, right? It says, and when he had removed them, he raised up unto them David to be their king, right? The king of Israel, David, father of Solomon, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Verse 23. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised up unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. There's no getting around it, right? And he said, he, um, of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise. Now, was the promise of Jesus Christ the only promise that God made? No. God has made a lot of promises, and a lot of those promises had to do with salvation. But let's see who the promises of God are for, right? Romans chapter 9. Paul executed this amazingly, right? Romans chapter 9 and verse 3. It says, For I wish, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, his brothers, my kinsmen, his, just his family, man, his people, according to the flesh, meaning no spiritual, but flesh and blood, his brethren, right? Verse 4, who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption, the grafting back in, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. Verse 5. The promises, first of all, before we go to verse 5, verse 4 literally tells you the promises are for Israel. Verse 5. The point. Who are the fathers, and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came? Who is over all? God bless forever. Amen. Amen, Paul. You see that? He said Christ, according to the flesh, came for the Israelites. How do you get around that? Right? Let's get, stay in the book of Romans. Let's deal with salvation, right? Because we know Christ came for the Israelites. Now let's deal with salvation. And that's why... And we're going to deal with John 3.16, right? I think I got a video on John 3.16, but we're going to deal with that, right? For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. We understand that he sent his only begotten son for the Israelites. And that's according to Paul, Peter, and Christ himself said that he came for the Israelites. 
Romans 11 and 26, right? And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. That has nothing to do with the whole world. So I don't know how people could try to fit this and force fit this to fit every other nation on earth when it says only Israel is going to be saved. All Israel is going to be saved. And we man, we really got to get into these. We really got to get into this, man. I'm surprised I haven't done this video before. All right, let's deal. Um, let's go to Isaiah 14 and then we're going to deal with John 3, 16 in this video as well. All right, Isaiah chapter 14. All right. So it says, for the Lord will have mercy on a Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the stranger shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So God is going to choose the Israelites. He's going to have mercy on the Israelites. But the strangers, the other nations are going to join, are going to be joined with them and cleave unto the house of Jacob. But to do what? Verse two, it says, and the people shall take them, Israel, and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them. We are going to own these other nations as slaves and captives. Right. In the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives who captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. All right. These are the nations. They have salvation, but they have salvation for the plantation. They're going into slavery. Jeremiah 30 and 16 elaborates even more on that. Jeremiah 30 and 16, it says, therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all they that prey upon thee will, will I give thee for a prey. You see that? So the people that put us in captivity, the people who trodden us down, the people who oppressed us and destroyed us as a nation of people, they're going to get that same judgment according to the Bible. Right? Now, let's deal with John 3.16, man. Let's just deal with that. All right. John 3.16, let's read it. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, people will read this and say that God loves the world, Jesus loves the world, Jesus died for the whole world. So, just to prove that, I just go to this scripture right here. First, we already know Jesus didn't die for everybody. He didn't come for everybody. We just read that. Now, let's see if Jesus actually died for the whole world. Because if he died for these people, don't you think he would pray for them? Right. John chapter seven and verse nine. It says Jesus Christ's own words. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou has given me, for they are thine. Interesting. All right, so let's go back to John 3, 16. Jesus Christ doesn't pray for the world, so therefore Jesus Christ couldn't have come and died for the world, which we've already proved through the scriptures. All right, so let's just hit that out the part. Now it says, for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. Who is God the God of? We know he's the God of Israel. You don't find it anywhere else in the Bible of him being the God of the whole world. So how could he love the whole world? Luke chapter 1, verse 68. It says, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Not the whole world, not every nation on the earth. But Israel, John 3 and 16, let's go back. <clears throat> so it says for God, the God of Israel so loved the world. Now, people get caught up on this. The world, he says the world, everybody, the whole world. Let's get that Hebrews 1 and 1. It says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Plural. So there's multiple worlds. What world was he talking about in John 3, 16? <laughs> Let's just figure it out. Isaiah 45 and 17, man. We go precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little, because that's how you understand the scriptures and create a sound hermeneutic, right? 
Isaiah 45 and 17. It says, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Salvation for Israel. The topic of the video. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Interesting. So Israel is known as a world without end. And Israel is known as that world without end that will have an everlasting salvation. Therefore, we can conclude that John 3.16 is talking about the Israelites. God so loved the world of Israel that he sent his only begotten son for Israel, which we've proved throughout the scriptures that whosoever. See, I forgot about that. Whosoever. Right. Let's deal with that. Acts 2.21. See, it's my favorite thing to do. I like breaking down John 3.16. It's easy. It says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words so whosoever out of the children of israel shall believe on the most high, i mean on jesus christ shall not perish but have everlasting life and we understand that everlasting life that everlasting salvation that was granted to the israelites back in isaiah 45 17 that is a promise that god made unto them and we understand the promise are for the israelites there's no getting around it and if you read john 3 and 14 this is interesting right here because people don't even read this part. and don't. Because if you read this, you will understand what John 3.16 is talking about. You know, I didn't have to go into all those scriptures. John 3 and 14 says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So when Moses was in the wilderness, was he in the wilderness with the whole world? No, he was in the wilderness with the Israelites. You see that? And he said, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So just like how Moses lifted up that serpent for the Israelites, it's just like how Christ is going to be lifted up for the Israelites. All you have to do is read two verses up, and it just explains what John 3.16 is talking about. You see that? Let's get another verse proving salvation for Israel. Jeremiah 46 and 27. Jeremiah 46 and 27. All right. It says, but fear not thou, O my servant Jacob, and be not dismayed, O Israel, not the whole world, not everybody. For behold, I will save thee from afar off and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and be in rest and at ease. And none shall make him afraid. So the Most High is going to save us, the Israelites, the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native American, man, keeping the law, central commandments of the Most High God. They're going to get that salvation, man. And faith in Yahweh Shah and Mashiach. You see that? Mm, let's get Isaiah 48 and 12. All right. Isaiah 48 and 12. It says, hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called, I am he, I am the first, I also am the last. So Jacob and Israel are the called of the most high God, man. Those are the called of the most high, man. Let's get Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. Romans 8 and 28. 28. Here we go, right here. It says, you know, let's start at verse 29. It says, for whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, right? Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, Isaiah 48 and 12, Israel is the call to the most high God, man. And whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified, and we understand the glory according to Romans 9 in verse 4 pertains to the Israelites. Man, I mean, there's just no getting around it, man. There's no getting around it, and we got to understand, man. 
The only way we're going to get out this, if you're a black, so-called black, Hispanic, a Native American, of Negro and Indian descent on your father's side, man, you are an Israelite, according to the Bible, from one of the various 12 tribes. All right. And what we got to do to get out of this hell hole is simply this right here. After the scripture, I'm going to close out. All right. Revelation 14 to 12, it says, here is the patience and the faith of the saints. I mean, here's the patience of the saints. The saints we know are Israelites, right? Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. We got to have that faith and works, man, in these last days. Have faith in Yahweh Shah Mashiach and keep the commandments of the Most High God, Abinawa Yahweh. Right? And with that, I'm going to say all praise to the Most High God, Yahweh Bashim Mashiach Yahweh Shah. And I'm going to say Shalom.